Hello friends, and welcome to Figure Study, where we are appreciating the many forms in several Transformers. It's finally happening, I am finally getting to the Power of the Primes Dinobots. Yes. Anyone who's watched any of my previous videos knows this already, but just to reiterate, I wanted to wait to get the entire team together so I could do one video on all of them instead of doing like one figure at a time. So I finally have all of them. It took a little while, mainly because I was waiting on Sludge and Snarl, and then when I actually did have them on order, I was waiting for other stuff to come in so I could have everything shipped together. But enough excuses, we are taking a look at them now. So yes, here we have the entire Dinobot team. Breaking it down real quick, we have Swoop, Slash, Sludge, Snarl, Slug, and Grimlock. As an entire team, I do think they all look pretty darn good together. Swoop does stand out a little bit because of the blue, when none of the others have that, but it doesn't really bother me. I mean, yeah, it doesn't quite match up in terms of the color scheme, but I mean, he does have red. So he's got the gray and red like everyone else does, it's just he's also got that blue. I would think that maybe the leader, you know, the big guy, would be the one with the one color that stands out, but eh, it's fine. I mean, Swoop does look good in the blue, and I'll get to that more when I start looking at them individually, but, you know, thematically I feel like it would make the most sense for the leader of the group, or the bigger guy, but primarily the leader of the group, who is the bigger guy, to be the one with that outline color. But again, it doesn't really bother me, and they do look good as an entire team. As a team, individually there are some things to each of them that are a bit not great. And for a quick group size comparison here, you can see them all with the Amiibo and a Power of the Primes Deluxe. And yes, what do you know, the Power of the Primes Deluxes are the size of the Power of the Primes Deluxe. Alright, so with the size comparisons out of the way, I'm gonna clear most of these off and we will start taking a look at the Dinobots individually. Starting with... The big guy himself, Power of the Primes Grimlock. And his dino mode is okay. There are definitely nods to the classic toy and character in this dino mode, but oh, it's dumpy. I mean, I feel like if we could ignore like this, then he's fine. Like just looking from the torso up, he actually looks pretty respectable. From there down, it's not so great. Okay, see. If this was the only Grimlock toy that I had, then this would be fine. This would be enough. I'd be a little disappointed with things like the chunky tail and the weirdly spaced legs. But, you know, for the most part, it would be okay. Thing is, he is not the only Grimlock I have. Yes, I know, it's unfair to compare this to something like Fans Toys Grinder, but even just the basic silhouette of the dino mode is not really doing it for me. Like I said, it's passable, but just compared to everything else, it's... Eh. Here and there, there are some nice details, though. He does have a lot of nice little molded bits going throughout. Lots of nice molded detail. The head is more or less classic Grimlock, but it's a little bit angular, I guess. Uh, there's just there's a few more angles to it than I think there should be. Not that I care that much. I mean, it looks fine to me. I'm just, you know, going by what I can remember. He does have the gold neck and the Grimlock torso, which will unfold to make his back wings. And like everyone else, I do think that this is very cool. I like what they did here, where they did this thing with the, uh, the plastic, where clear plastic where they painted the inside gold so you get an effect kind of like that layered look that the original toys had. That is very cool. And all the Dinobots do that in some capacity, and it's it's neat. It's a neat effect, and it does tie them all together in addition to like the same grays and the same reds. So there are things to this Dino mode that I think are fine. He has three fingers on his hand, which is not right for a T-Rex, but I know that's how he's been. That's kind of how he was drawn in the cartoon from what I'm aware of, and that's kind of just how he's always been. So I guess that's on the original makers of the series, but seriously, T-Rexes don't have three fingers. They have two. 
two fingers. Two teeny tiny little T-Rex fingers. Again, like I said, it's just the torso, like from the torso up to the head, I think looks great. The rest of him, it's just, it's too wide, it's too blocky. It just doesn't quite work in T-Rex mode. And I'm also not a fan of how these come out. I mean, I know it's because of the transformation and the combined mode, but it still looks kind of not great. And this tail, it's not as bad as I thought. It's not as bad as Fall of Cybertron Grimlock's tail is, from what I could see. I don't actually own Fall of Cybertron Grimlock, technically. But, I mean, this is better than I thought it would look based on the pictures, but it's still not great. Because, like, from this angle, it looks okay, but it's got this little bump here. But then when you turn it this way, his tail is a boat. His back in dino mode really isn't that great. Again, it's to facilitate the various, you know, the robot mode, the combination, all that stuff. But it's just not, not great. And I know it's unrealistic to expect something like that from a, you know, mainline non-masterpiece figure that has three modes, but it's still kind of eh. I mean, I could deal with the back because I'm not going to be looking at the back Realistically speaking, I can deal with all of it because I'm not going to be looking at him in this mode. I'm going to be looking at him in combined mode, but it's still just... they. I feel like they kind of dropped the ball on this just a little bit. But I will appreciate these details more in robot mode, that's for sure. And actually, speaking of robot mode... We'll give Power of the Primes Grimlock this. He does look pretty awesome in robot mode. Not, you know, not perfect, because it's, it's never going to look perfect because of all the various things that are going on with this toy, but it does look very good. There really isn't a whole lot of new detail here, but with the new context, we can appreciate the detail that is there more. Like the fact that he's got this really nice gold chest that's like very just massive chest the big kind of burly physique shoulders big arms and here this doesn't bother me as much because now they're forearms and yeah they still are kind of like weird looking a little bit but like when they're forearms and not calves it doesn't bother me as much and also you're typically looking at them from this angle so it's not that bad and with the legs the tail actually splits to make a pretty nice pair of grimlocky boots they even kind of have a little bit of the typical Grimlock toe there. It works out pretty well. And there is actually some molding on the inside, which is definitely appreciated. And yeah, the legs are a bit hollow, but like they kind of cover it up, which makes sense because these are the calves of the uh, <laughs> combined mode. So I could see why they would do that. I also got to say, as simple as it is, the tail tip folding back to kind of clean up and give him extended heels is pretty smart. Getting in a little bit closer to look at some of those other details. Again, they're just nice kind of nondescript mechanical details. One of the things I like about his arms is actually his hands. It's a small thing, but they gave his hands little knuckle claws, which not only helps to get his hand out when you're transforming him into robot mode, but it's just kind of a neat little detail. It makes him look a little bit more like a brawler, and it's a small detail that you could miss, so I suppose in the grand scheme of things it doesn't do much, but still, I appreciate that detail. I think it's cool that they gave Grimlock knuckle claws. And moving up to the shoulder, again, you know, all stuff that was visible in, in uh, dinosaur mode, but I do like the Grimlock shoulder, just that kind of pushed in bit, with, like a little circular detail in there. It's a classic Grimlock shoulder, only it doesn't have like the bubble over it, but still, it, it does look good. He even has little uh, not quite Autobot logos on both of his shoulders there. He does have one in the middle, which, you know, fine. He's even got a little bit of detail on the inside of his gull wings, and you can see, looking here, it's not just from the other side. Like, that is detail that they molded in specifically just for the interior, which is definitely cool. And the chest also looks, you know, like I said, it's got like a big burly chest, but it actually has some nice detail in there, and they did that cool thing where it's like the clear plastic with the gold paint on the inside. I know a lot of people are concerned about this being clear plastic, and... You know, I am a little concerned myself. I haven't seen any kind of wear on this yet, and just the 
feel of this clear plastic. It doesn't feel the same to me as other clear plastic that I've seen in like older toys. I don't really know what it is, but there's just something about this that it doesn't feel as brittle to me. I don't really understand it, but yeah, that's how it is. You can see some more nice molded details in the lower bits there. And of course, there's the ever wonderful, always imposing, always cool, weirdly iconic in its utter simplicity Grimlock head. And yeah, that's a, that's a Grimlock. <laughs> it's definitely a Grimlock. Got little dips on the side of the mouth plate there. No teeth. Sometimes there are teeth, but uh, not with this one. Yeah, no, it's, it's a really very much a Grimlock head. It looks really good. <laughs> and yeah, he is a very, very cool fellow. Now, if this was Power of the Primes Grimlock's thing, if he didn't have a combined mode, I'd be okay with this. I'd be a little disappointed with the dinosaur mode because it's kind of eh, but the robot mode, I think, does make up for it. It's not perfect by any means, but this is a pretty darn good Grimlock. And now that the leader's out of the way, it's time to move on to... Power of the Primes Dinobot Slash. And I said this, I forget which video it was. I think it might have been my top 10 acquisitions of the year. I could be wrong, but Slash is freaking awesome. It might just be me. I don't know. I can't quite quantify it, but even though she's the smallest of the group and she's the simplest because she is a Legends sized figure, there's just something about the way that this figure came together that appeals to me on almost every level. I mean, first of all, Dinobot, that's great. New Dinobot, that's also great. Lady Dinobot, that is even greater. Also, Toy World, take note, this is how you can do a Lady Dinobot without it getting weirdly sexual. Because, I mean, come on. Really. What was up with that? But anyway, Slash is a very simple Velociraptor. You can kind of see robot bits here and there, but they kind of hide away relatively well. You do have a gap there, but it's it's okay. Again, she's a legend, so it doesn't bother me that much. The way the legs kind of come down to make the stomach is nice, and it's actually pretty surprisingly clever how the insides of her ankles come in and actually cover up her face, because her head is right there, and her face would be looking out of the dinosaur butt, basically. <laughs> But because of the way these tuck in, it actually does do a really good job of covering up her face. And that's surprising. It's just, it's such a simple transformation, but it works super well and hides a lot of the robot bits, at least in my mind. I like the uh, little claw toes coming out there. That's how you know. And then you got the slender head. And yeah, it could be a Deinonychus, could be a Velociraptor because of the elongated snout. I'm thinking Velociraptor, because Deinonychus tend to have broader heads. But at the same time, we're talking toy robot dinosaurs, and Grimlock has three fingers when he's supposed to be a T-Rex, so this very well could be a Deinonychus, although they probably did go with Velociraptor because that's the more notable of the two, because Jurassic Park. Another interesting thing that's kind of a weird commonality between a lot of the Dinobots, not all of them. I guess three out of six, so half of them. Half of them actually have a head with a lower jaw that's a different color than the rest of the head. Because Slash has it, Swoop has it, sorry. Slash has it, Swoop has it, and Slug actually has it too, so it's kind of an interesting design thing. And then got the nondescript circuitry detail on the back that it can open up and make like a little seat for a Titan Master or Prime Master to ride in, but eh. And for the purposes of just covering up the dinosaur back, I think it works. I don't necessarily think it needed to be that gold. Like, it probably could have just been gray, but eh, it's fine. It's just overall, it's a very tiny, but surprisingly effective little Velociraptor mode. And I like it quite a bit. But then there's the robot mode, which I actually like even more. Here we have Slash in her robot mode, and my goodness, tiny though she may be, she is practically perfect. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, I'm generally not a huge fan of Legends class figures because they are simple and they're small and 
they're just kind of eh to me, but Slash does everything right for me. The transformation is simple, but still interesting to do, and the way everything kind of just changes position to go from Velociraptor to Robot and some of it tucks into the back there, it's like, it's simple, but it does a surprisingly effective job of it. The whole chest section here is covered up in dinosaur mode, but everything else is visible. Well, okay, everything except the feet. And it's just its shocking how well she works as a figure. I really, really love Slash. She is, and I am saying this, so I guess spoilers, but Slash is my favorite standalone Dinobot out of the entire Power of the Primes team. Out of all six, she is my favorite. And it's weird because she's the simplest and the smallest, but just she does everything so effectively. The silhouette is great. And, you know, she's got slightly big shoulders and, you know, me and big shoulders. But still, like, the silhouette is fantastic. The little transformation tricks are really well done. The fact that the dinosaur feet are just attached into her hands is actually really clever because they don't really read his hands when they're in leg mode. But then you just pull that out and suddenly, oh, yep, no, they're hands. They're, <laughs> they're forearms. The leg detailing is very nice. And it all kind of works with the Dinobots as a team, which we'll get into when we go through the entire team again. And there's a little bit of hollowness in the back there, but it's completely forgivable because the feet fold up in there, and she's also a legend, so she's pretty small. There is some stuff going on in the back, but like, again, it's a simple, small transformation. I'm not sure what else they really could have done, and it's pretty clean, all things considered. I just have the same complaint that everyone else has, which is I kind of wish that these could do something. If these could just kind of move up like, you know, just kind of hinge up like this to just kind of clean up the back, she would be absolutely perfect. But as is, she's still fantastic. The head sculpt is kind of an interesting, almost swoop-like design, at least in the helmet. I don't know, maybe canonically she's supposed to be related to swoop or something like that. But like, you know, she has like a tiny little head crest thing coming back there. She just works so well and she's tiny and she's simple and I shouldn't love this figure so freaking much, but I absolutely do. I need to stop because I'm going to keep gushing, but yeah, Slash is just fantastic. She can even manage a pretty darn convincing arm crossing pose. And again, at her size and simplistic engineering, that's kind of amazing. So yeah, Slash. I freaking love Slash. She may be a new member of the team, she may not have an official place in the Gestalt, but I don't care. She is fantastic. So, from Slash, let's move on to... Sludge, because why not? Both Sludge and Snarl are the most recent acquisitions that I've had, so I haven't had as much time with those two as I have with the rest of the team. He's not my favorite and he does have some issues, but I still like him. And, unlike Grimlock and Slash, although it's impossible for Slash, I did actually own a G1 Sludge back in the day. Technically, I owned a G2 Grimlock, but yeah. So anyway, Sludge is a... whatever this is. I th think he was supposed to be a Brontosaurus back when Brontosaurus was a thing that people thought existed, but is now an Apatosaurus. I mean, he's, he's a long-necked dinosaur. He's obviously not a Brachiosaurus because he doesn't have the giant head hump, and he's obviously not a Diplodocus because he doesn't have the extremely long tail, but, you know, he's a generic long-necked dinosaur. And he looks pretty good. I mean, there's kind of a big, blank, non-painted spot right on his back there, whereas you've got some, like, painted details all along here, so it kind of makes this seem a little bit more sparse than it probably needs to be. But it's okay, all things considered. I mean, I'm not going to keep him in this mode for very long, but it's fine. It just seems a little bit blank when you look at the rest of the figure as a whole. And the head is, you know, it's typical sludge, and they do that same clear plastic with the gold paint on the inside thing. Not a bad idea, and it works pretty darn well. It even kind of separates around where I think I remember it separating in the original toy, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the legs are, you know, nondescript, but they get the job done. There's a little bit of detail in here, so I guess this section isn't entirely unpainted, but it's just this bit here. And there are holes here, 
I don't know why they put holes there when all of the other Dinobots don't have gaps in their whatever you want to call these bits that fold out onto their backs to make wings. And the original certainly didn't have it, but eh. The way it is, like, unless you have it displayed sideways with, like, something bright behind it, chances are someone looking at it on a shelf isn't even going to realize that's a gap. They're just going to think it's, like, a darkly painted spot. Now, the back half with Sludge is what kind of bothers me a little bit in Dino Mode, because his back legs, they only move like this. They don't have any kind of ankle pivot, which is a shame, because it looks like it should, but no, it's one solid piece, so that's a little disappointing. But what really disappoints me about Sludge is the silver, and I don't know why they did it the way they did it. I mean, I know his tail's supposed to be silver, fine, but like, these legs, it's just weird. His back legs are silver, and there's that little gold ring in there, but his front legs are gray with like the little black detail there. It's just kind of like, I don't know, why didn't they... I guess they didn't make this gray because they already had the silver paint and there's no gray paint on this figure, but it's just kind of, eh. I mean, I know it's probably budgetary, but I don't really know all the specifics of what go into designing these things, so it's all speculation and I'm probably talking out of my butt, but still, it just kind of annoys me that the back legs are silver when everything else is gray. But I mean, stylistically, and with the molding, like you can see there's some nice details in the tail there. Even some nice molded details in the legs there, but it's just a little disappointing. But still, not a terrible dino mode. Definitely better than Grimlock's dino mode. But enough about dino modes, we're not here to talk about dino modes. We're here to talk about, well, okay, I guess we are here to talk about dino modes. But we're also here to talk about robot modes. So, Sludge's robot mode is it's, it's okay. I think the transformation is fine, and I think he cleans up relatively nice, and, you know, the back wings are kind of typical. But what bothers me about Sludge is his chest. His entire torso, even though parts of it are painted, just looks incredibly blank and bland. I feel like it could have benefited from a little bit more detailing, but... Realistically speaking, that's probably not going to happen, because, I mean, look at this thing. It's just, it's not really much going on there. It's got, like, a little bit of a thing there, and a teeny tiny off-center Autobot logo there, which I don't know why this wasn't the Autobot logo, but whatever. It's just kind of eh. But again, it is painted, because, like, this bit down here is painted black, and it matches up with the waist swivel area a lot better than you'd think it would, but it's still just kind of eh. I mean, overall, his silhouette's nice. He's got the typical giant dino bot booties. His arms are a little bit on the lanky side in comparison to his legs, but I'm not too bothered by it. Again, it's just that chest. Like, the colors work fine here, and he's got those nice gold toes, but there just needed to be something else here, right in here. It's a shame. His head's pretty nice, though, and it's interesting how he has more of a uh, kind of cone-shaped head almost, with just like two little ears coming off. Like, you can kind of see how it tapers up, and it also does that a little bit from the front. It's a good-looking head. I don't remember enough of the G1 character or toy to know how accurate the head is in comparison, but it is nice. And it is painted well. I like that they got the face in silver, and then they also did this bit on top that actually kind of goes back along the top of his head so it makes the head look like there's a bit more going on there. His expression's not that interesting though, he's just kind of like, meh, but it's, it's fine. And I do really like those yellow eyes actually pop really nicely against the black. And yeah, they've got, they're kind of sharing a border with the silver, but still their proximity to the black, it does really make them stand out and they look good because of that. Now, before I move on to the next one, I do want to say there's some nice detailing in Sludge's chest. You know, it's just molded detailing, and that red really isn't a good color to have molded detail pop out. So it's a little bit of a shame that they didn't do a little bit more with his chest. 
which again, I'm not saying they didn't do anything. I mean, he's got paint here, paint here, tampograph there, tampograph there. So they did do stuff to his chest. It's just nothing very interesting. But that's going to do it for Sludge. So now let's move on to Mr. Swoop. Now, I actually do like Swoop quite a bit, too. I'd say he's probably my second favorite after Slash. His dino mode looks pretty good from most angles. Surprisingly, it looks pretty good from the back. The only thing that bugs me is from the front that's, you know, totally just like robot arms kind of going down. I saw someone did a uh, custom repaint that they posted up on eBay when I was just kind of browsing around where one of the things they did was they painted the fists black. And that actually did a really good job of making the arms a little bit less apparent just because having everything black going down, like visually, just made it a lot easier to kind of pretend that those aren't there. But yeah, that swoop is a pterodactyl thing and he's very cool and... I like him very much. Although, okay, it's not a pterodactyl thing. He's a pteranodon thing. Pterodactyls don't look anything like this. But I do like how they actually added a hinge here, specifically just so you can have him flying along. I, I love that they did that. It's like just such an unnecessary thing because that hinge almost never gets used for anything else. But that's very cool. I also like that if you wanted, you can kind of have him perched kind of hunched over, which is cool too. Aside from the arms, he's a pretty solid little ball with wings. It's kind of interesting how it all kind of folds up. And he's got some nice detailing, especially like those wings. They did a really good job with those, <laughs> detailing wise anyway. Yeah, there's no paint on them, but still, they do look good. And the back here has some nice detailing, which we'll see more of in robot mode. And yeah, it's just fairly simple, but also fairly solid. And he's got some nice details in the uh, torso here. And see, this is what Sludge is missing. His torso is mostly a block of blue, but then you get these little bits of silver here that really help to just kind of make it more visually interesting. Granted, when he's a robot, he's also going to have a pteranodon head to add detail as well, but still, it just, yeah, Sludge needed something like this and not just like the big black slab that they put on there. As for the dino mode head, I always thought Swoop's head was kind of interesting, and the way they did it here is really cool. How it's like, I mean, I know this is kind of typical where it's the face mask basically that folds down, and then, <laughs> and then you've got this weird image. And would be nice if this joint was a little bit tighter, because it's kind of pretty loose right in there. Or would be nice if this kind of clipped when you push it up, but it just doesn't. But still. The way that the shape flows into the rest of Swoop's like robot mode head and that crest is pretty well done. And again, I know it's a classic design element, but it works really well here. I also really like how they took that silver and kind of continued it from one mode of head to the other. Because like you can see there, you break it and there you've got Swoop's helmet. But then you put that up and that silver just kind of merges the two visually, which is really nice. And of course, they did the clear plastic with the gold paint. I think Swoop, out of everyone, is probably the one with the fewest translucent plastic that's been painted bits. Because everyone else has, like, hips and tails and heads and backs and, in Grimlock's case, in Dino Mode, I guess, pelvises. But Swoop, it's just that beak. But it suits him. Anyway, that is enough of the bird. Well, technically, they're all birds. But that is enough of that. On to the robot mode. I really like Swoop. <laughs> His robot mode is really cool. And again, fairly simple transformation. Not as simple as Slash, obviously. But just the way it all kind of shifts around and moves and you get this really slick looking robot is really cool. He's got a really nice silhouette. Even if you ignore the wings, he's got a pretty nice silhouette where he's got like big Mega Man boots, but like not comically large like we had with Sludge. <laughs> like those boots are enormous. But Swoops are... Much more modest in that regard. And color-wise, this all works pretty well, too. Though, he does have a couple of standout colors when compared to the rest of his buddies, which we will get into when we do the group shot. But uh, aside from the chest, he also has these 
green bits on the cuffs, and I don't really know why they went with that color, because that color green does not appear on any of the other Dinobots, so I don't quite get why they wanted to do that, but okay. Another thing that kind of stands out with him that's also the same on Sludge is, look at the two of them real quick, let's bring Sludge in there, you can see the legs, it's like black thighs, black pelvis, but the hips are gray. Same thing with Sludge. Black thighs, black pelvis, gray hips. I don't know why they did that. I guess they just wanted to add a little bit of extra color there, but I don't think it works. I feel like it would look better if it was just black all through there because you've got plenty of gray in like the forearms and the fists and the shin area, and of course the wings. Anyway, silhouette and color wise, he's good. Detail wise, he's also really good. I really like how the pteranodon mode feet fold around and end up creating just detailing for the shins. That's a really neat trick. And also, I didn't mention it, but there's this uh, black detail there that's on the back of the pteranodon mode, which is only visible in dino mode too, which is kind of interesting that they bothered to paint that. I think that's cool how that folds down. Now it's just leg detailing. And speaking of leg detailing, get a little bit of that red going through there, which is nicely painted. Lots of really nice detailing on the chest, which was also visible in Pteranodon mode, but now he's got this thing coming down, and that also adds some interest to it. And I also rather like how, yeah, this is a transformation joint, this entire hinge section here, like all this black plastic, but I like how they incorporated it to the point where it kind of looks like some kind of fancy collar. I don't know, there's just something about it that's just really neat to me. And they even molded some nice details in there, too. And there's even some detail on the uh, inside there. So yeah, they I think they put a lot of love into Swoop. And not so much into some of the other Dinobots, but that's okay. Now for his face. Swoop's head, I think, may have gotten the most attention out of the entire team. Like, the red helmet is, I think that's one piece, and then the black for the face bit is a separate piece, so it's like... It's just two pieces of plastic, but they were actually pretty smart in that they used different colors because then when you put it together, you get like this nice color break up there. And then of course you got that silver on the side. And I like how the red from the crest comes in just a little bit around the forehead to kind of add a little bit more of that color to the face area. And you also get a little bit of silver from the ears, which it's hard to tell but there's like a little bit of molded detail in there that almost makes them look like vents or something. The face also looks pretty darn good, and I like how he's got the recessed blue eyes, and the blue also stands out pretty well with the silver and the blackish color there. It's uh, really nice colors used for Swoop, barring the weird seafoam green that they used for his sh uh, shirt cuffs, but overall, he is a great great looking robot and I mean like I said he is my second favorite of the whole team and there is a good reason for that because he looks pretty darn slick if Slash didn't exist Swoop would be my favorite so that is it for Swoop we are almost done but now we're moving on to Snarl and I I feel like I might have a bit of a Mandela effect thing going on here because like I feel like I had Snarl as a kid but I also don't think I did I know I had Sludge, I know I had Slug, who back in the day was called Slag, but I think those were the only two Dinobots I ever had for G1. I don't know, maybe there was a friend of mine who had Snarl and I played with it at their house. I don't know. Snarl's Dino Mode is pretty good looking. It was a pretty decent mix-up of gray, gold, red, some of that kind of translucency effect stuff. Though his breakup is also a little weird in that it kind of doesn't follow the pattern that everyone else has. By which I mean most of the other dinosaurs, the colored stuff like red, or in Swoop's case blue, ends up towards the chest. And the gray ends up more towards the back. In Snarl's case, it's the opposite, where you've got the red towards the back and the gray towards the front. The other thing is, he's got a lot more gold on him than anybody else. <laughs> Like, you know, you've got the head, the neck, the chest, the legs, the back legs, the hips, all the spines going all the way around to the back. I mean, yeah, I know this gold isn't painted, but it's still gold plastic, and it's representative of that color. So, 
yeah, he's just loaded with gold. And it doesn't bother me. It's just interesting how he stands out. And I think it's one of those things where they just wanted to have each member of the team stand out slightly in their own way. So like Snarl has a whole lot of gold, Swoop has blue, Grimlock is enormous and has more fingers than he should have, you know, that kind of thing. And he does look good. There's quite a bit of breakup, as I said, with like some nice detailing, got some black in there to kind of keep this from being too much of a blank slab, which was Sludge's problem. And you've got this just the nice gold plastic spines going all the way along. It's done really well. <laughs> I like Snarl quite a bit. I'm not entirely sure why they bothered to do silver in the elbow, knee, whatever area there, but I mean, I'm not complaining. It's just kind of kind of a weird bit to have there. And also there's a little bit of silver in the hips here, but it doesn't bother me like it does with Sludge because Sludge's entire leg was silver with like just a little bit of gold there. Whereas Snarl, you've got a little bit of gold, even less silver, and then black, and then silver, and then gold, so it's a much nicer balance of color. And yeah, he is a pretty nice looking Stegosaurus. His backside does look a little blank to me, kind of like how Sludge's torso looked a little blank to me in Dino Mode, but it doesn't bother me as much here because Sludge, it was just, you know, a featureless slab of gray. Whereas Snarl, it's, yeah, there's like this big blank red spot that looks like he's wearing hot pants, but then he's got these plates going all along his back. So I think it works out pretty well. Anyway, let's say goodbye to the dinosaur mode and hello to the robot mode. I know I said Slash and Swoop are my favorites, and they are, but Snarl is my favorite transformation out of the entire team. Because what he does is just really interesting. I like the fact that the Stegosaurus, the front Stegosaurus legs just kind of lock in there, and then you open up the underside, split the head, all that folds around, and it just kind of tucks neatly against the back. And I think it's clever how there are multiple tabs on this panel here that lock things in place, including the back of his knee there. And that kind of keeps everything where it should, keeps it from popping out. And that's just nice. <laughs> I really appreciate the engineering. The fact that his shoulders shift depending on the mode, so that way it kind of recenters everything, makes it look a little bit nicer. The split of the tail, the fact that the head comes up yeah, there's just some nice stuff going on with this guy. And the robot mode that we're left with looks pretty good. Um, there are some things that bother me about it. I think the silhouette is nice, and the color is great. I mean, I love that he's got the black like in the legs and pelvis area, like just nice and cohesive. He's got a nice sprinkling of gold throughout the gray for his legs, and like a little bit of silver in the shoulders, and the rest is like black and gold with like gold up along there. And I do really like the tail split for not quite shoulder pads, but sort of. And he's got a big blocky red chest, but unlike Sludge, he's got the combiner peg that goes through it, which adds a little bit more visual interest, even though it's, you know, just black and red. But then he also has like tinier details in there, which uh, bring him closer, you can see those. As for what bothers me, well, I'm a little bothered by the screw holes going along there. Not terribly so because I mean I don't know where else they could have put them so like that doesn't bother me that much and there is some nice detailing in there and I didn't say it before but I actually quite like the uh, sort of mechanical circuitry detail that they actually have going on in the plates his chest is a little bit of a cube so it's kind of like a little bit weirdly shaped it doesn't bother me too much but it does bother me a little what bothers me more, and pretty much everything that bothers me on Snarl is his upper body. Uh, what bothers me more is these shoulders, which I think are fine, except for the fact that they're very clearly hollow. And yeah, they molded some detail in there, and they did paint the inside, because, you know, they 
got to do the color thing. But like when he's just standing there, it's still hard not to notice the big gaps in the shoulders there. I just kind of wish that that kind of filled in a little bit better, though that would probably affect things in the dinosaur mode. Still, I do think it would look nicer if that wasn't quite so gappy. The other thing that bugs me is because his chest is such a nice big cube, it makes his head look a little bit tiny. Like overall, I think it's fine, but just proportionally, his head looks, I guess, unnecessarily small. <laughs> I wouldn't call him a pinhead, but it just it looks small to me when compared to the rest of his frame. And last thing that bugs me before we get to the head itself is the plank that the head sits on. Now, this is where the transformation happens. It'd be nice if it clicked into place, but it doesn't. But, you know, I can, I can deal with it. What bothers me about that plank is the fact that it's gold. That bugs me. It just doesn't work. It could be like he's wearing an ascot or something like that. Like, I just feel like if that was either black or red, so it would either blend in with the color of the combiner peg or with the red of the torso that's around it, I think that would work so much better, and I don't know why they didn't do that. I guess if they left it black, it would look a little bit too much like one big black, you know, line going up his chest and straight to his head. So I guess, okay, maybe it is good that they broke up the color there, but in that case, use red, you know? As for the head, the head is nice. And from what I can tell, fairly typical snarl, he's got a bit of a scowl, which is kind of funny. And yeah, it's it's a good looking head. It's got some nice detailing, the silver face, red eyes, nice silver bit in the top there. But yeah, snarl is pretty cool. Not my favorite of the team, but like I said, he is my favorite transformation. He's probably the most ornate looking of everyone because he's got the big shoulder banner going on there. But anyway, we are done with Snarl. So let's move on to Slug. I saved the best for last. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. I fucking hate Slug. And it's sad because I owned a G1 Slug and I liked that toy. I do not like this toy. I don't think it's the worst per se, but as a standalone, this guy is not great. Part of it is because the way I appreciate my Transformers is I typically can appreciate a nice alt mode, but the robot mode is really what sells it for me. If a robot mode is not great, I'm not going to be all that interested in it. And well, well, we'll get to that in his robot mode, but I mean, the whole reason I bring that up is because I do have to admit his dinosaur mode is actually pretty nice. With one exception, I feel like he may actually be the overall tightest dinosaur mode out of the entire team. That is what Slug brings to the table. That is all Slug brings to the table, but he brings it to the table nonetheless. And really, I mean, he's basically just a potato with legs, a tail, and a frilly head, but it actually does work quite well. Like, all told, and again, keep in mind, this is from someone who hates Slug, who hates this Slug, but I will admit, altogether, this actually is a really nice robot dino mode. Could do with a little bit more color in the front legs here, but like, there's some nice breakup going all throughout, where he's got the red horns, the gold face, the silver lower jaw, well, gray lower jaw, the gray frill, which used to be silver on the original toy, but whatever. This back piece which should bother me like sludge does because it's just a big gray slab doesn't bother me at all because it's actually got some really nice texture in there that brings some much needed shadows into it that kind of make it look more active than it really is even though it doesn't have a whole lot of paint and you've got this black line that goes up around the side there that is just mechanical details that have been painted but that black line really helps to break it up as well. And that's good because it's a lot of gray going all through here. But again, it's broken up because there's the gold on top there. And then a couple of stickers, which all the figures have little stickers here and there. Except Slash, I think, because she's so tiny. And then the gold tail. And it all works quite well. 
Though it is kind of funny that the gold tail has these little plates on the back and like there are no other plates anywhere else on the, <laughs> on the dino mode. But still, the color breakup is actually really nice with the exception of the back hips. Now I do like what they did here where you've got a little bit of gold and a little bit of black. So it's not one solid circle of gold, which I think actually works to the dino mode's favor because if this was all gold, it would look a little bit I guess overbearing, but breaking it up with a little bit of black there actually does a really good job of making it more visually interesting. It's just the silver for the hips, and I know other people have pointed this out too, I just don't understand why they would do that. It's probably that this is one piece, so like with Sludge, they probably painted it silver because, you know, they wanted to cover up the clear plastic, but it does kind of suck that they did silver instead of trying to do gray because it just would have matched a lot better and it's not as bad as sludge where you've got just one big old silver leg just kind of distracting you but like the silver hip is a little bit weird and it does stand out a little bit plus it's kind of like you had that silver paint why didn't you paint his frill silver come on but still all things considered minor gripes you know, do think again, could use a little bit of color up here, maybe just like a little bit of black in the front there or something. But uh, all told, while I do hate Slug with a passion, his dino mode is actually pretty darn cohesive. Gotta grudgingly give him that. But that is enough for the grudging, so let's get into the robot mode so I can get into some griping. Okay, Slug. I mean, okay, I will admit, to start, one of the reasons why I can't stand Slug may have to do with the fact that for a while he was my go-to Power of the Primes Deluxe size comparison guy, and I had to transform him over and over again, and I do not like his transformation very much, but it's more than that. The legs are a little bit of a pain because of having to flip those heel bits down and tuck the legs up so that they kind of semi-tab into the slots on the side there, but Sludge does it too, and it's okay. But what bugs me about Slug is a lot of the things that, like one or two things that bug me about the other Dinobots in the team, he does a lot of the same things. For example, I don't like the way Sludge's legs transform, Slug does that. I feel like Sludge's torso is too plain, doesn't have much detail in it, or at least not much paint in it. Slug has that problem. Snarl's head to torso proportions are off. Slug's proportions are off in the wrong way, his head looks sort of enormously bulbous compared to his torso. And I know there are worse toys out there. I don't own them because I try to avoid toys that I think are bad, but Slug, you know, I, I got him because they have a Gestalt mode and also he is part of the Dinobots team, so I feel like he's kind of a necessity. I wish he weren't, but he is. And I mean, I know a lot of this is sort of his fundamental design, so like, I'm not really bothered by the open mouth Triceratops head, even though it leads to a really weird profile and, I mean, what is going on here but yeah and like the jaw coming down to make the chest that's nice but this is the same color as the combiner peg and there's really nothing going on in here except like a small somewhat muted autobot logo so it's like you know couldn't they have painted a little bit on the inside here to make that more interesting do a little bit on the peck areas here like they did with snarl just to bring a little bit of something in there. You've got these big voids on the sides here from his back, which doesn't open, by the way, which also annoys me because Slug should have the freaking open wings like everybody else, but no, he doesn't have that. So you end up with these like weird gaps along his sides, which like they could have brought his torso out a little bit and then his torso wouldn't look quite so thin compared to the rest of his body like these i feel like his biceps should be bigger and it's just i i don't like this guy 
And I mean, also, while I'm complaining about the torso not having any detail to it, painted detail, there is actually a lot of really nice molded detail in there, but you can't see any of it because this red is bad at showing off molded details, whereas the gray shows off molded details quite nicely. But anyway, yeah, no paint at all in the torso. He's got silver paint on his knees. Why did they put silver paint on his knees? They could have used that paint somewhere up here to make this more visually interesting. Oh, and he does the same thing that Swoop and Sludge do, where it's like black and then gray, but at least the red here is like red and not black, but then everyone else, like this whole pelvis area is black, so why if they weren't paint, like they could have not painted these and painted this black and done that in black, I just, why did they do what they did? Why? <laughs> Getting a closer look at Slug's head, the head itself is not bad, but it's like this weird kind of gunmetally gray-ish color that nobody else has, and it's, it's his thighs are that color too, and I don't know why they did that. I guess they did it because they had the plastic for the head, so they figured they'd use the same color plastic for something else on the toy, but like, why? this color doesn't show up on anyone else why do <sighs> anyway we're talking about the head the sculpt i think is fine i th think they painted his face but it's really hard to tell because if they did it's a very similar shade to the rest of his head so it just kind of looks like one big solid block with like two little red dots that they painted for the eyes and i mean it's a pretty crisp job that they did there which is much more crisp than this botch job on the hip which i didn't point out in dino mode and the overall sculpt is nice. His head's a little boxy, but it doesn't bother me. And there's some nice sculpted details in there. And I do think it's nice that they bothered to put a little bit of gray on the inside there. So that it's not just like his head swallowed up by a sea of gold. But too little too late. And I feel like that would have been a worthy sacrifice if it meant the rest of him not looking quite so terrible. And again, with this, I mean, if it's split open, we wouldn't have the... <sighs> I don't like Slug. Don't. Like. Slug. He is absolutely my least favorite of the entire team, and if it wasn't for the fact that they're a team, and the fact that Slug has been there since the beginning, and is also kind of a necessary component of the combined mode, I would have gotten rid of him immediately. But I'm stuck with him, unfortunately. Anyway, yeah, that's enough harping on Slug for now though I could totally go on for longer, <laughs> but I won't, because I know you all didn't come here to hear me complain about how much I hate Slug. But yeah, that is that, so let's get the rest of the team in here, and we can look at them all together. Taken as a whole, I think they look good as a team. There are definitely some weak links here. Most notably, Sludge and Slug don't quite look up to snuff compared to everyone else, but as an overall unit, they work together. You've got the same grays, the same reds, but then you've got some weird colors that aren't anywhere else, most notably on Swoop, who again has that kind of greenish, bluish, whatever you want to call it, on his cuffs, and then the blue torso, which is just kind of weird, again, that he has two colors that aren't seen anywhere else on the rest of the team. And then you've got Slug, who has that weird grayish gunmetal color that nobody else has. The main colors, specifically the gray and the red, that's kind of across the board. But again, there are some things that just didn't quite work, and it does bug me looking at it now, because now I can't unsee it that Slug has the... Like, his fists are black, and that's it. There's no other black on him, whereas everyone else has black on them, so it's just... Ugh. Get with the program, Slug. Actually, I want to see something here. And with Slash, with her arms uncrossed. Yeah, wow. The Legends figure has more chest detail than Sludge. That's just sad. I mean, again, like I said, Sludge is painted in more places than it is apparent, but like, 
Slash has that nice silver in the midsection and the full stripe of black going down to break up the red. Disappointing. But it is what it is. There could be more cohesion across the team, I guess, is what I'm getting at here. There is definitely cohesion. It's just there could be better cohesion. But anyway, that is enough talk of cohesion. Let's just bring in our size comparison guinea pig so you can see the Power of the Primes deluxes are the size of a Power of the Primes deluxe. And Slash is just a little bit shorter than Samus there. And yeah, I think that is going to do it. I think I've kind of carried on long enough. But just to reiterate, these three, Grimlock, Swoop, and Slash, definitely the best of the team. Snarl's kind of off in the periphery. Sludge is a little bit below Snarl. And then way, way down, way down beneath the prime armors and the combiner feet is Slug. But don't need to go down that road again. So that has been my look at the Power of the Primes Dinobot team. Don't worry, we will be looking at Volcanicus in the next video. But this has gone on quite long enough. So what do you all think of the Power of the Primes Dinobots? Have any of you gotten your hands on the entire team yet? Or are you just kind of interested in specific ones? Are you interested in getting them for the team aspect, which you know works pretty well? Or are you interested in getting them for the Gestalt mode? Because for me, it was more of a Dinobot combiner, how could I not? And out of the entire team, either of what you've seen or what you have, which one is your favorite? And I apologize to anyone who likes Slug, but I just, I do not like him at all. It's just me, though. It's me not liking him. I'm not saying he's, you know, objectively terrible. There's just a lot of stuff about him that bothers me. <laughs> but anyway... Which is your favorite? Because I've already gone over mine. And what are your thoughts on Repro Labels? Because I know Repro Labels has some stickers for a few of these. Not a lot of them, but some. And I know Sludge and Snarl don't have them yet. And Sludge could really use some. Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always do enjoy hearing from you all. And while you're at it, also feel free to like or subscribe. Any combination of those three things would make me a happy Rob. And remember, art, except for that, is more than meets the eye.